Hello, I remembered more dreams. Uh, I, um, so yeah, this is gonna be part ten. So, uh, yeah, I remembered more dreams from last night. Specifically, I remember one where, um, I was at school, and, uh, the environment of that classroom was very dystopian feeling. I keep having dystopian dreams about school where it just feels really oppressive and dark and not very comfortable or friendly. So I had a dream where, uh, I mean, yeah, I wonder why, you know, I wonder why I perceive school that way. Could it be that it's actually like that? Could it be? I don't know. But anyway, uh, I had a dream where I was, uh, in, um, uh, Mrs. Jones' class. Uh, she's a, uh, a lady that I, that I, see, there was Mrs. Jones from, like, first grade. That's a different Mrs. Jones from the Mrs. Jones in, uh, 10th and 11th grade. So, yeah, I know that, that means nothing to you guys. Like, that's just a very common name, so, of course, there's gonna be multiple Mrs. Joneses. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care that you, you don't know these people, and yet I'm telling you about them. So, um, we were in her class, and we got to listen to music, and I, um, we, um, she was playing, uh, it was, like, a, a version, a different version of, um, Good Guys Don't Wear White, which is originally by the Standells, I think, uh, yeah, so, um, I was, and it was okay, but they kind of changed the lyrics a little bit, and they changed the structure, the the tune of it a little bit, like, it was a little different, and I was like, this is great, Mrs. Jones, but I know two different versions of this song that are really good, so we could play one of those, maybe. See, I know two different versions of it in real life, there's the one by, um, by the Standells, and then there's one by, I believe, um, Minor Threat. I guess, uh, it's, and that one sucks. I'm sorry, but I don't like the punk version of it. You'd think I would, because, like, it, it has punk potential and everything, that song, you know, but, um, no, I, that's just a bad version of it. I don't enjoy it. So, anyway, good guys don't wear white. So, we listened to, uh, and it, by the way, it's a song about, uh, being a working class and, like, it kind of defends the working class, you know, because it's about, like, white collars and blue collars, so, like, good guy sometimes good guys don't wear white because, you know, sometimes they're blue collar and that sort of thing, but I also kind of like to interpret it as being about, um, race as well, like, good guys don't wear white, like, maybe good guys aren't always white, you know, sometimes they're people of color. That's how I like to think of it sometimes, but I don't think that was the original intended intended meaning. Um, but anyway, and it's kind of a stretch as well, you know, to interpret it that way, like, skin color isn't a clothing choice, you can't wear it, it's more just a part of you, <laughs> obviously, so I don't know, I don't know, that interpretation is a bit of a stretch, but I don't know. Anyway, so, they, p Miss Jones played, like, a few seconds of it before these people came in, these, these guys, these, like, I guess, other teachers or some kind of staff member, maybe it was even the principal and the vice principal, I don't know, but they came in and they started yelling at the kids for the song being too loud. They started yelling at us when the teacher was the one that put it on and we had no control over how loud it was. So I got mad and I was like, excuse me, sir, but why are you yelling at us, the kids, when we had no control over the the volume of it. And, uh, he gave some bullshit explanation. I don't even know what he said, but it made no sense. And I was like, no, this, how, how dare you? I said that. I was like, how dare you? Like, we had no control over this. It was the teacher who put the song on. She has control over the smart board, not us. And, um... He was like, okay, she's arguing, so you're in trouble now. But then the bell rang to go home. 
and I just left. I just, I just left. I didn't care. And I went to the school bus, and I got on the school bus, and then it started driving and stuff. But then, like, it kind of turned into a plane, because I guess we're on the fucking magic school bus or some shit. I don't know. It turned into a plane, and apparently, like, this plane bus wasn't actually supposed to fly. Like, it just so happened to be part plane, but it wasn't supposed to fly. It was just supposed to drive us around. But then it started flying, so I was telling the school, or the, um, the bus driver, I was like, Miss, miss, this, the, the plane is flying, we're, we're not, and, and me and Jacob, my friend from real life, we were joking, we were like, oh, we're at an airport, we're at an airport, I don't know why we were saying that, cause like, I guess you do fly planes at an airport, but mostly that's just where they land, so it's, I don't know, but. Anyway, I mean, that's where they take off and where they land, I guess, but, you know, I don't know. So, anyway, uh, the, the bus driver insisted that, no, this plane isn't flying, but it was flying! We were in the sky! Like, we were kind of hovering above the, the road, so, like, we were still near the road, but we were, like, flying above it, so... It was odd that she was denying the fact that we were flying. <laughs> Which rhymes, by the way, denying, flying, hee <laughs> hee. Rhymies. Little rhymos. Yeah, rhymies and rhymos, you know, dreamies and dreamos. Yeah, it's a theme. We're doing that. We're doing that. So yeah, but anyway. That was crazy and bizarre. And uh, yeah, I think that's the last of the dreams, so yes. Goodbye.